You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Good evening, folks. Before we get started, I have to clear up a little little discrepancy here. Apparently the other night, or within the last week, because I've been getting a lot of email about this, and I even received one telephone call. Apparently somebody called the Alex Jones broadcast and ask them, ask him why he didn't have me on the air, or ask him something about me. <coughs> Alex Jones said he had had me on the air once before, several years ago, and had to cut me off the air because of the foul language that I used. So on the air tonight, I'm going to tell you, Alex Jones, you are a bold-faced, miserable, stinking, little, coward liar. Now, let me say that again so there's no mistake about it. You can all tell Alex Jones that I said this, and I suspect he's listening because he does. Alex Jones, you are a bold-faced, stinking, rotten, little coward liar. I was only on the Alex Jones show one time. It was years ago when I didn't know who he was when I didn't uh, realize what a liar and a coward and a sensationalist bullshit artist that he is, he was on one little FM station down in Texas. He wasn't on all the stuff that he's on now. And I agreed to be on his broadcast. That's when I was doing guest appearances on broadcast years ago. I was not cut off. I did not use any kind of foul language whatsoever. He treated me very well, and I stayed on for the whole show. Some of you in Texas know that that's true because you heard the broadcast and you taped it. Later when I found out who Alex Jones was and what he was doing to the truth, and how what a cowardly liar and sensationalist he really is, every time he called me after that, I have always refused to appear on his broadcast. Absolutely refused to lend him any credibility whatsoever by appearing on his broadcast. And that made him very angry. I've also revealed him for the lying, sensationalist, bullshit artist that he is by every once in a while bringing to your attention the lies and the deceit and the rumors that he spreads over the airwaves that are not good for any of us, and they're not good for the nation. They are especially not good for militia and patriots. The most disgusting broadcast he ever did was on uh, New Year's Eve, the year 2000, the New Year's Eve, 1999, bringing in the year 2000, and he, which he went completely out of his mind and claimed that Russia had launched intercontinental ballistic missiles with multiple warheads at the United States of America and actually panicked millions of people who were putting their children and their belongings in their cars and heading for the hills. Now, there's lots of things that can be said about me. Nobody needs to lie about me. Sometimes I am irritating. Sometimes I absolutely will not suffer fools and am just as rude as I can be. Nobody has to lie about me, Alex Jones. So I suggest that the next time somebody calls your broadcast and asks them about me, you tell the truth. There's lots of truth that you can tell about me. But don't ever lie on me, buddy. Because I'll chop you off at your ankles. I will chew you up. I will spit you out for the lying, stinking, rotten little coward that you are. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have to say about Mr. Sensationless, lying, rumor-mongering, bullshit artist, Alex Jones.
Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Good. Hey, I just wanted to confirm to you, they, uh, I called a few weeks ago before the attack happened. Mm-hmm. And I, I was driving home from Maine, because that's where I'm from. I live in New Hampshire. And I was pulled over by customs. And this was about a week and a half, I'd say. And a, another party of mine, a buddy of mine, they were pulled over by a... It was a roadblock of customs. And it was right before Holton, Maine on Route 1. Had you crossed any borders? No, not at all. We left from Prescott, Maine, and we were headed back to the New Manchester, New Hampshire area. Okay, go ahead. And from what I understand now is they got a slew of illegal Mexicans working up there in the field. But it just made me a little suspicious because I've lived in Maine my whole life, and I've never had customs or Anything like that, unless I was going across the border. Well, they don't have a right to do it, unless... Of course they don't. Unless they have a warrant. Are are you you across the border? I'll tell you what. When I got pulled over personally, they asked me for a driver's license, but they never ran it. He just... he, He looked at it, gave it back to me, and said, you're okay. And... From what I'm hearing now on the news, I'm just assuming it's because I wasn't from Islamic faith. Yeah, they knew what was going to happen quite you know a while, quite a while like, before it did. It was bizarre. <laughs> I've lived up there my whole life. I've met customs agents. I, I've lived in Callis, Maine. Mm-hmm. I was 11 miles from the border in Prescott. I've never had a problem. And it was just seemed weird to me that they were all through the state of Maine with roadblocks, and the state police were assist- assisting them also. Uh-huh. But, I don't know, Bill. We, uh, I, I think you hit the nail right on the head, and a bunch of my friends also do. And we appreciate you being out there, and it's just, it's, it's bravo to you, Bill. Thank you. You just keep it up. Appreciate it. Thank okay? you very much. And, um... I've got to get online, and i got to get some of your stuff offline, but we really like those shows you used to do on this broadcast. What do you mean, shows I used to do? It's very informative. You know, uh, you talked about Freemasonry, you talked about... Uh, oh, those are available online. I can only do yeah. so much. I know. know, I know, I know. you only got so much time, and I wish I had enough money, and when I do, I'm going to give it to you so you have as much air time as you want. <laughs> well, How's that, pal? Thank you. All right. Hey, take care. Thanks for calling. Hey, listen, here's another story. I, I kind of came in like halfway through The Sopranos. Yeah. That's a great series, by the I way. I think it's cool, but I'm just comparing it with your life, I mean. Yeah. I don't really understand or know what happened with your wife and your child. I sent them out of the country. The government issued a warrant for the arrest of my wife. They're going to throw her in prison. She never has done anything illegal or unlawful. She's not a criminal, period. This is how the Gestapo in this country works. What they were going to do is arrest my wife, and then they were going to use her to make me an informant for them. They would say, if you agree to be an informant for us and rat on the militia and all of the patriot movement and be a spy for us, then we'll drop all the charges against your wife. That's the way they work. And so to prevent them from using my wife against me, I sent my wife and my children out of this country. They are safe. See, that, that's what worries me about the state of emergency we're in and constitutionality. It should. In a because state of emergency, there really is no constitutionality. Right. They throw it in the can, just like Clinton did, and we weren't even in a state of emergency. Well, we've been in states of emergency off and on. Oh, yeah, he used that forever. to benefit for, for a lot of things. But but what worries me is um, in the in the constitutionality. Where are our rights right now? They're wherever they're wherever you're willing to draw a line and say you cannot come across this line or I'll kill you. That's where your rights are. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Bill. And if you don't understand that, folks, then it's beyond my capability to explain it to you. They will get away with whatever you let them get away with. And until you draw the line and you're willing to die for what you believe in, they will keep taking and taking and taking and taking until there is no more to take. It's all gone and you're a slave. Good evening. You're on the air. 
Yeah, hi, Mr. Cooper. Hi. Um, listen, that Alex Jones interview was directly after you published the Veritas June 26, 1998 issue about the uh, Cooper family being targeted by the Fed. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, and back it was, in 1990. So did, he, did he kick me off the air? No, he's a liar, and you've pointed it out, and I heard that interview, and you were nothing but cordial. Yeah, well, that's the truth. That's the truth. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Bye-bye. Alex Jones is a miserable, rotten, little, stinking, cowardly, bold-faced liar. <laughs> Boy, you know, all, all of these people ought to know better than to mess with me, because I don't take any crap from anybody. And if I'm not afraid of the whole machinations of the entire government Gestapo, what in the hell makes Alex Jones think that I would ever be afraid of his cowardly little rotten butt? Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know, I verify what you said about that Alex Jones interview. They had it archived on the Internet at one time, and I did hear that interview, and there was nothing wrong with what you did. And I wasn't thrown off the air, was I? Not a bit. No. And that's the only interview I ever did with Alex Jones. As soon as I found out what he was doing and who he really was, I he, he's called me back at least a hundred times since then, and I've always told him to take a hike. So anyway, thank you. You bet. I appreciate that. 520-333-4578 is the number. I may make some mistakes, folks, but I don't do what these other clowns do. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, let me turn the radio off. It's off now. Hello? Hi. Yeah, um... Yeah, uh, I just have a, a couple questions I want to ask. Uh, for one thing, um, can, can um, your past uh, radio broadcast on the Internet be um, uh, um, received, uh, I mean, looked up uh, by date? In other words, like uh, September the 2nd? I don't know. Have you been to the website? Uh, yeah. Go I, there, and you, you'll see how they're listed. Yeah, I just see, see um, the, the numbers. Okay, and um, uh, uh, I, um, I found it just so um, disturbing, so uh, extremely informative, the uh, website I looked up today about... Um, uh, terrorists being used as hoax to uh, for people to gain power yeah. and, and whatnot. Then it's been used uh, throughout the history of humanity. Right, and also I remember, as you recall, uh, um, that you have a big wall map of a 1943 wall map of the map of the world before the war ended. Yeah, uh, before the war ended, showed the exact uh, um, the divisions of the world uh, as they actually became. And it showed a new country that nobody had ever even dreamed of before, right where it is now, called Israel. Yeah, and uh, the thing that comes to, to the uh, question that comes to mind to me, I'm very glad it, it did not happen because I'm sure a lot of people would have uh, uh, suffered and been killed. But what comes to mind to me, uh, if the war, um, since, isn't it strange? Strange that uh, what I understand, uh, World War II, which uh, began in the 30s or mid 30s in England. And what's what I find so strange, uh, it did not be begin in England in the 30s. Not not begin, but it started in, in England. It didn't start in England. Or 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 there was like bombings in England. It didn't not until the war started in England. The war actually began long before England was even a part of it. Uh huh. I see what you're saying. Uh, and but anyway, it comes. My question is, if um, with this if it, with this all being planned and all, it seems like very odd that. Uh, that Windsor Castle was not like a severe, severely bombed during World War II. Severely bombed? It wasn't bombed at all. Doesn't that seem very, very ironic since there were many war planes, I understand, that were bombing England during the 40s? Yeah, I find it pretty incredible, but who am I? <laughs> yeah, very, very incredible indeed that Windsor Castle was never bombed. I just find that very, very incredible, which really shows that there's a lot more going on than what... Uh, not only Windsor Castle, but the actual city of London. Now, you have to understand, and that's the, play, the part that's called the crown, okay? Yeah. It is the financial center of uh, the world, or it was at that time. And yeah. uh, it was totally run and controlled by Freemasons. And, uh, yeah, you're right. There's some big discrepancies about the bombing of London. Yeah, and I also uh, I remember you were mentioning also that, uh, that uh, London has a lot more jurisdiction of what goes on with the American government and what goes on you know, with the Americans here in America do. Yeah, and, that's, and, uh, that's true. Yeah, and um, uh, also, uh, my last um, uh, comment I want to ask, I, I, I don't really get the gist of it. We were mentioning a long time ago when, uh, oh, I believe it was John F. Kennedy uh, Jr. was uh, killed in the plane. You were mentioning it was shot down. No, I didn't say it was shot down. Or, or, I said or, I was shown photographs 
of the wreckage by a military officer who brought these photographs to my home, knowing that I have a radio broadcast and that I would talk about what I saw in these photographs. I was allowed to look at them for a certain specific period of time. Yeah. And what these photographs shows is that a bomb was detonated in the tail section of Kennedy's aircraft. Right, okay, uh, forgive me, yeah, I, I stand correct, I remember you mentioning, mentioning that um, if it would have crashed into a mountain, which they, which is, they would have said the wreckage would have been in that general area, uh, but since it was bombed... Uh, what are you talking about? You, I remember you were mentioning about how the um, pieces of the plane... Well, pieces of what plane? You're uh, skipping around like a... Like a <laughs> of John F. Kennedy's plane. It they, would have, they were scattered around, they were, they were right there. Oh, okay. Um, okay. They were over this section of ocean. Okay, you said it was a war against the Illuminati and someone else? I don't know what broadcast you were listening to, mister, but it wasn't mine. Okay. No, I remember you mentioning about how it's a war against the uh, why uh, John Kennedy's plane was uh, bombed. No, I never said anything about a war. Uh, oh, okay, about, uh, no, about an ancient war. I never said anything about an ancient war in regards to Kennedy's plane being bombed. Do you know why it was bombed? Or? No, I have no idea. Do you? Uh, no. Um, that's <laughs> very terrible. Well, anyway, thank you very much for taking my call. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. for Have calling. Great night. Thank you. You know, folks, when you call and you, your 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 conversation doesn't seem to have any coherence, I really sometimes don't know what you're talking about. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. This is Brian up in Cincinnati. Hi. Um, I wanted to uh, report something that I heard on the local news broadcast here uh, the Friday after the uh, trade, ce or trade Center bombing uh -huh. or attack. Um, they were giving an overview of all the memorial services in the country, and I was really only really paying half attention to it until they come to the point where they were showing people uh, following in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And what four words can you guess would they have taken out? of the Pledge of Allegiance. I have no idea. And to the Republic. I swear I heard it with my own ears. Who I took it? Believe it. Who, who took it out? I don't know if it was edited out by the people who put on the news broadcast that night or it was actually during the day during that particular ceremony. But they had a bunch of people reciting the Pledge to the flag and they were standing in front of the giant American flag and on this it. news broadcast, <laughs> on the 11 o'clock news, now this is my own local news. This wasn't the national broadcast. It was the local news. Someone, or by purpose or by accident, left out and to the Republic. Well, it wouldn't be by accident. They either uh, know the pledge or they don't. Right. That's what, that's what I mean. That's and, right. I, and I find it very difficult to believe that they would know all of the words except for those four. So it had yeah. to be an int intentional omission. Right, that's 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 what you know, hit me at because you know I was hitting, I was stunned when I first heard because well, I, well, I had to read it over my mind myself. Haven't you heard? This is a democracy. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you heard Larry King talking about our democracy? Yeah. yeah. Well, Eric, Larry King must be ignorant. Huh? Well, the Cincinnati talking <laughs> heads are even worse. There was a guy that called in the other day, and he was saying. Oh, well, you know, we all got to have this national ID card with our digitized thumbprint on it and a photograph of us. That's the only way they can make sure they can identify us. Well, they don't. And I'll be glad to get one. You know, they even got a new technology now where they can implant a computer chip right inside your hand. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. These people were, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Well, I, I think they ought to take people like him and uh, perform... Uh, uh, transplants and trade his brain for a quart of buttermilk. Yeah. And then, you know, let him loose in the field. and well, that would be worth the, the buttermilk. Yeah. Let him graze and moo and, yeah. you know, chew their cud. And well, they've already been given over to their own depraved minds now, haven't they? They don't have any minds. They, they really they don't have any minds. Yeah, they really these are, are These are stupid people. Yeah. And, you know, either either most of the people I've been talking to over the last couple of years come up and say, hey, you know, what's your take on this? Or they come up and cut me out and tell me I'm wrong and, you know, I'm a sheep and an idiot and all that thing. So, yeah. so I know what it's like being in the, uh, you know, receiving end of people's ill will. Um, another thing that happened up here recently in Cincinnati, you remember the, the police shooting that caused all the riots and stuff here in Cincinnati? Yeah. 
Well, just, uh, I think it was, um, it was yesterday or today, they just handed down the, the, the verdict, which was one judge, you know, making a decision in the case, no jury. But they found the officer not guilty of negligence or, you know, uh, homicide in, in the death of the individual. And because he chased this guy down the dark alley, and the guy had baggy pants on, and he kept trying to pull his pants back up so he wouldn't trip and fall. Well, he was cornered in an alley, and the guy was pulling his pants back up. And this guy says, well, I just, you know, I drew my gun, and it went off. <laughs> well, yeah, he drew his gun because his finger's on the trigger. Well, what's yeah. the first rule of You don't shooting? put your finger on the trigger unless you're going to shoot somebody. Yeah. And you don't well, point a gun at somebody unless you're going to shoot somebody. Yeah. And you don't shoot somebody unless your life is in danger. Yeah. And if you don't see a gun in the guy's hand pointed at you, your life is not in danger. Yeah. I'm sorry, all you police officers out there that just can't wait to kill somebody. That, that's true. Did you, didn't have, did you read anything in the paper about what was going on during the trial? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the defense was claiming that, well, he's got this eye problem that causes him to see things, you know, when he's under stress. Yeah, well, <laughs> he, that? then he shouldn't be a police officer, should he? Really? You know? <laughs> I, I think he's a liar. That's what I think. Well, yeah, it's obvious. But I like, think he's you know, a liar. Picture of seeing him on the TV. Is, yeah. you know, his face. Do you ever go out and drink with the police officers? Uh, no, I can't say that I have. Uh, I did for a while when I was in real tight with the L.A. bomb squad and the L.A. Uh, special operations department because we trained them to dive at the College of Oceaneering, and they looked up to, to me because I was a deep-sea diver and one of their instructors, and and so they would invite me to go drinking with them. What they what, what comes out of their mouths when they're drunk um, would make Hitler cringe. Oh, yeah. I've, 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 I used to work with a guy that was, he was in the firefighters, uh, you know, and he, he told me about some things about high-level union people that, you know, would just shock and amaze you, but, you know, they're just... Gross individuals. Like yeah, they are. Sick and depraved minds. They are. They're, they're haters of God. They're haters of people and men. And they can't wait to kill somebody. Yeah. They, they just really enjoy that. It seems like it, it adds a little star to their to yeah. their eternal crown well, or something. Thanks for calling. Okay, thank you, Bill. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. Not all police officers are that way. But more and more of them are becoming that way because they're edging out. They're forcing out of the police departments all over this country the good cops who, uh, who, are, who are the elderly cops now. They don't get promotions. Uh, they, they get edged out or they retire. They're forced to retire. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. <coughs> um, listen, I was listening to you the other night. Let me turn my radio down. And you were mentioning uh, how, is it, the, is it the white papers that Bush is publishing to all the countries in the world where he's going to list all the terrorists? No, I never said anything like that. No, no, you didn't say that, but you said You just what? prefaced this, that you were listening to my broadcast, and then you asked that question as if I said it. No, wait, wait. What you said is that you watched they're going to put these militias in America on it. No, 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 that's not what I said. I said, sooner or later, they're going to have to define the word terrorists. And okay. we will know what they're up to when they do it. And it wouldn't surprise me to see American patriots and militias somehow twisted into this definition. Okay. Excellent. I wish you guys, when you listen to me, would really listen to me. We try. We record. Well, most of the time you, you you hear what you want to hear, or you hear something that I never said, and that bothers me. That's not true, Bill. Well, it's, what you said had nothing to do with what I said. That's not true. It is we, true. You want me to play it back? I take this broadcast every night. I get a tape so running right here. I can play back your words for you if you want me to. Okay, but I didn't mean what I said. Ah, no. I like <laughs> where your response. Usually, you don't mean what you say, and that's the whole problem. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. It really bothers me when I say something on the air, and you hear something completely different that I never said at all. That's disturbing. That's really disturbing. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. This is Tim. Hi. Haven't they already defined uh, what who, who terrorists are? The Project Megiddo came out. 
Project Megiddo. Yeah. What is what is Project Megiddo? That was the FBI thing that. Uh, How do you know? Well, I read it on the net. You read it on the net. Yeah. You know something? I could sit down tonight and write all kinds of fictions and post them on the net and say the FBI did it. Would you believe them? Probably not. You made no attempt to verify whether it was really written by the FBI, or if it was written by the FBI, if any portion of it had been changed by somebody else. Well, they claimed even on the TV that it was an FBI operation. You're not listening to me. How do you know that the copy you found on the net was a verbatim I copy? Know. I don't know. That's my point. You don't know. So stop believing the crap that you find on the net, including what's posted on our website, unless you verify it. You have to verify it. You can't trust anything anymore. That's how we got where we're at. Don't you understand? Yes, I do. Then stop it. Stop reading this crap that you find everywhere and just blindly believing it. But you don't know if it's true or not. Do you? Well, no, I don't. That's right. That's how we got to the point where we're at right now. Is everybody trusting and believing and, you know, not questioning anything. And that's exactly the way they want you to be. Got to uh, stop. I guess their their plan is working perfectly, then, huh? If you buy into it, yes. Well, I don't buy into a whole lot. I guarantee you that. Well, stop believing anything unless you can prove it. Check it out. There's a Freedom of Information Act. If Project Megiddo was really a legitimate project of the FBI, you could send through the Freedom of Information Act to the FBI and get a copy. Did you know that? Okay. And then when you've got an official copy in your hand, you can say the FBI wrote this and said this. Otherwise, you don't know. Because I'm telling you right now, most of the stuff on the Internet is either a total false, fake, fraud, lie, or it's truth mixed with lies, or it's been doctored in some way. Okay. Okay? Okay. You can't trust it. Believe me, you can't. Okay. Thanks for calling. God bless. You too. You can't believe this stuff, folks. It's, finding it on the Internet doesn't give it any more legitimacy than getting it in your fax machine from the Patriot Fax Network. It's still bullshit. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Cooper. This is a call from the uh, UK. Um, I'm up early in the morning listening to your broadcast, but it's well worth it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, can I just uh, ask you, have you been able to review any of the video footage of of the terrible tragedy. Um, we had a, a montage of video footage that was um, broadcast in the UK about three days after the event on the commercial channel, um, the ITN channel, the news channel, which is our main uh, basic news apart from the BBC. Mm -hmm. And on that, um, I just happened to be videoing um, some of the montage. And so much just caught my eye, and it was so quick and so fast, but it just caught my eye. And I we we ran the video and pressed the um, you know advanced frame by frame button. Mm -hmm. And the two towers. This was a little piece where the plane was coming in from the left hand side to the left hand tower as it was on the screen. The right hand tower w w had already been hit, and there was a huge plume of smoke that was going from the right hand tower. And the video footage showed the uh, commercial plane coming in on the left, and as that entered, and then the explosion went on, and then I saw a shadow that was in the plume of the uh, smoke, and it was a dark shadow moving frame by frame, and then as it came out of the plume of smoke, it was either a very, very large missile or a plane, and it's plane. Balloons and the two. Uh Engines in the vertical tail. Absolutely right, and it was so quick. It was hypersonic. Yeah. And you know all about it. Yes, I do. Wow. Well, nobody else is talking about this. What, what was happening? I have no idea. All I know is that there was an American fighter jet plane uh, right with that second uh, um, hijacked jet that crashed into the second tower. Absolutely right. And, 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 and in the newspapers, uh, the, the couple of days afterwards, there was a, a, an image of a, a, a supposedly very top secret fighter plane that's very, very fast. And it looked exactly like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, that definitely happened. And that must have also crashed into it, mustn't it? 
Uh, no, it didn't crash. It didn't crash? No, it flew right on by and kept right on going. And that's what other people are saying is the mystery object in the sky. And they claim that it hovered, but it doesn't hover. It's moving away. And so it looks like it's not uh, going in any... But it is. It's moving away. Uh, but, but, you know, on the screen on, on the, that I was watching, though, if you saw the angle of it coming down, it looks as if it could only crash. It was... No, it didn't incredible. crash. It went right by the building and ah. right on the other side. And then it turns and goes directly away from the camera. And it looks like a white object in the sky. And some people have... Oh, listen to Art Bell. If you get him, he claims it's a, it was a flying saucer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this thing was actually dark in color uh, that, that, that I saw that got on the screen, and it's actually dark. Without a doubt, it's either dark, either dark, metallic gray, or black. Well, it depends upon exactly where in the in the frame that it was. Yeah. When it reached the other side of the building, it was in full sunlight, and it looks like it's white. Right, I see. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm just amazed, but shouldn't be amazed with you. I listen to you all the time. That, that you knew about it. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. At least you know. Thank yeah. you very much for your program, and uh, we're all rooting for you, sir. We really are. And America. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Them. That's right, folks. And the plane that went down in Pennsylvania was accompanied for many miles by at least one F-16 American fighter, which shot that plane down. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is uh, Mike in Canada calling. I thought I might uh, give you a laugh here. Um, our federal government said yesterday it has frozen the finances of terrorist groups and individuals in Canada, but later refused to say whether any such assets exist. Uh, well, of course. And, and, of course, they can't name the terrorist groups because they don't know who they are, do they? I guess not. <laughs> Why can't they publish the names of the terrorist groups and tell, tell you know, in the newspaper exactly what funds on deposit at what banks were frozen? Uh-huh. For everyone's benefit. Yeah, I'm telling you why they can't. Because they haven't done any such thing. It's all it's bullshit. Uh-huh. Another uh, thing, you mentioned Larry King earlier. Uh, about two weeks before the September 11th event, uh, he was a guest. Um, sitting around the fire with George Bush Sr. And it was really uh, a media job just making him look like your favorite grandfather and actually reading old letters, love letters he sent to his wife. Um, I don't know whether it was just timely or not, but it'd be interesting to hear some love letters to Noriega or China and who else, whoever else he knows. It just seemed like such a, a con job. It is. It's it's a media circus designed to uh, to propagandize the the sheeple out there. So exactly. that's what it is. Thanks, Bill. Good night. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. It's your turn to call, Poopy. <laughs> Pick up the phone and dial it. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Good evening. You're on the end. Hi, Bill. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. I trust. No one. Good for you. I trust no I'm the guy that's called. I'm I didn't mean to Goodbye. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight the number. Don't take what I say on this broadcast personally. I use your call to educate millions of people. And if it, if you're wearing your heart on your sleeve, you better not ever call this broadcast. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, no, uh, I called in the night of those. Uh, that, that brother from the U.K., I'll support that because I called in at night, and you said no one else had reported that at the same time, but you could plainly see before they cropped the picture that there was two F-16s at about building top level. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe 50 feet below that airliner when it came in, so that means they were escorting that air, that jet. Either they couldn't shoot it down or they couldn't talk it down or they were escorting it in there and showing it where to go or something. I, don't, I hate to say yeah. Well, there's a, there's a question about whether they had uh, rules of engagement that would allow them to shoot down a civilian airliner full of passengers. Uh, we do know that at some point, uh, President Bush did give the order that if there were any more hijacked planes in the air, and if they were headed for targets, shoot them down. And that's what they did to the plane in Pennsylvania. They shot it down. But they're not going to admit it. That's correct. I heard a report on that, that... Uh a uh, puff of white, a plume of smoke came out of the engine, and that uh, one person said no one in the cockpit could, could make that happen. So that had to come from the outside. Yeah, it was a, they, the, the F-16 fired a heat-seeking missile that went right up the exhaust of the engine and blew the wing off. I certainly believe that. And the way, <laughs> and the way they use this spin, this uh, 
spin doctor that we're all watching and, and paying for this uh, being indoctrinating, uh, they deserve a reward and they should be shot. Given a medal and shot, I think. Who should be given a medal and shot? The people that are controlling this uh, whole thing and pulling the strings on this uh, indoctrination device, this one-eyed demon in your living room floor. No, I, I wouldn't want to give them a medal. I'd just want to shoot them. In fact, I'd rather hang them. I'd rather hang them in Times Square at high noon and let the whole nation watch it on television. The way everything goes so smoothly for them, would you admit that it's almost demonic in, in its Let's not get into religion. Let's not get into demonic. You want to talk about demons? Call Art Bell. Okay? Thanks, Bill. You're welcome. 520-333-4578 is the number. <laughs> nope, demons didn't do it, folks. Demons didn't do it. People did it. People did it. God didn't do it. People did it. It makes me sick to hear these people say, It's God's will. It's not God's will. It was people's will. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Uh, let me go fix your uh, Majesty 12 page. There's a CIA document missing. Uh, I have no idea. The website's huge. You need to talk to the webmaster. The webmaster? So you need to go to the site and email the webmaster. Do you think there's any validity in uh, how uh, the Japan report that... Uh, Pentagon is recommending uh, tactical nukes against Afghanistan? Uh, no. I think that's purely conjecture, and if the Pentagon were recommending any such thing, they certainly wouldn't uh, tell anybody that would go and report it on the, on the news. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. 520 is the number. But I will tell you this, if anybody else used nuclear tactical weapons or nuclear weapons of any kind, we would certainly not hesitate to, uh, to retaliate with atomic weapons. That I know about the military. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, this is Chef from New Jersey. How are you? Good. I'd like to thank you for a bit of phraseology I have not heard for two decades. And uh, it made me smile, and I will certainly use it. And your phraseology was to suffer fools. And I would just like to thank you for saying that tonight. You're welcome. And it's true. I do not suffer fools, period. Have a good evening. You too. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. Uh, yeah, the Americans have been coddled. I mean, we have just been spoiled rotten. We think we're so smart and uh, we're so educated and... We know it all, and we're the kings of the earth. The truth is, the majority of the American population are dumber than earthworms. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill. <laughs> yes, sir. Nelson, Syracuse, New York. Yeah. Did you get the package I sent you on the listing? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Uh, did you also see in the package a uh, uh, copy... Xerox copy of the IRS rules for churches. Yes, I did. Very interesting. Our good boy Rush Limbaugh says there's no uh, Bilderbergers. But in that list, <laughs> the IRS recognizes the Bilderbergers. Well, uh, let, me, let me qualify that. Unless you got the list directly from the IRS, you don't know if it's an IRS list or not, do you? Yeah, that's what I thought. Unfortunately, <laughs> I was assuming. Well, you can't assume anymore. Uh, I'll try to check it out. There's more lies and bullshit and frauds and crap and, and de deception uh, out there than, than you can even possibly imagine. Ninety, nine, over 95% of everything that you ever see is a lie. Right. Very good. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yep, I got what you sent me. But just because it says IRS at the top, don't mean it came from the IRS. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, Bill. Yes. Um, the early days of strategy, you had said that the building was brought down from the bottom down. Are you still holding to that position? I believe one of them at least absolutely was, yes. Okay, because I was just looking back at the building number seven, the third one that came down. Mm -hmm. And that was clearly from the bottom down. You're absolutely correct on that one. Yeah. In fact, the uh, video which was taken, and it sounds like they're saying, uh, nice shot, police, in the background <laughs> as they're taking it. Yeah. Uh, they're homing in on the bottom floor even before it starts to come down. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, well, what can I say? I mean, you've heard everything I had to say. 
and uh, yeah, I believe at least one of the of the twin towers uh, for sure was brought down from the from explosions on the bottom. Okay, well, I wanted to know. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. A lot of people who uh, who were exiting the uh, the trade center towers reported that the when they got to the to the ground floor in the lobby, there had definitely been explosions down there. And people heard explosions. So, you know, you can believe what you want to believe. The evidence that I have on videotape and the evidence that I have from, from uh, the testimony of witnesses uh, points to, the, to at least one of the Twin Towers was brought down uh, by controlled detonations. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello, Bill. Uh, I was uh, taking as many people listening, the credibility that you can add to somebody watching Internet uh, display or any of this information is that they need a real good solid background in science. Well, it, yeah, but you know what? The level of the background of science you need isn't any more right. than about eighth grade. And that, that, if, if somebody's trying to be rational and they understand the years of experience in the scientific background of somebody like uh, Ben Parton when he's trying to explain what happened with the explosives in Oklahoma City, then they can judge who's telling the truth and who's giving a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. But in your own capacity, you're uh, an experienced diver. If you could understand uh, and explain to somebody why they could get the bend simply because they did some shallow diving, but they went up to 10,000 feet in an airplane a little later in the day. Then yeah, you don't fly if you dive. Yes, exactly. That's a rule. Divers don't get out of the water and go to the airport. And, uh, unless, when, they, uh, unless they want to die. When you're, when you're dealing with uh, a lot of the material science, very basic things like the triple point for water, the understanding of the freezing and thawing and contraction and expansion and, and basic things like this. The, the binary alloy phase diagrams, for instance, if they're dealing with metallurgy and what an iron carbon diagram is all about and the way material fractures. The, 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 the people need to do their basic research like that before they even go to read documents and understand somebody who's trying to falsify a report. Yeah. And, uh, but, they, but they don't have to, they don't have to go into that, that, uh, a realm of, of com complicity or complication, I should say. Well, back in uh, the average person's never gonna never gonna know some of the things that you just talked about. Well, in the 1960s, as a prelude to flight training, I made a point of reading through probably 50 or 60 um, uh, crash reports. I wanted to know enough about the causes, the features, and air crashes that I could ask an intelligent question occasionally to my instructor. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it's just that if, if people get together on a skull station, even challenging, challenging each other's presumptions, as you're doing on the air, it has a very valuable uh, uh, pattern, and, and you have a third or fourth party there to challenge the first two that are having a dialogue. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just trying to do things that you would do as you would instruct an intelligence team or trying to work out a uh, discovery of the truth. Mm hmm So anyway, I thank you for your time. You're welcome. God bless you. Thanks for calling. Yeah, the level of ignorance in this country is way beyond belief. It's beyond understanding. It's beyond acceptance. It's, it's not acceptable. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is Nate. I'm Sean. How are you doing? Good. I wanted to throw in my two cents on the World Trade Center stuff, too. Uh, on the second car, I believe it was, the one with the plane hit higher towards the top, mm -hmm. you can actually see the mass above the impact start to kind of bend down and then drop. Yes. Okay, that one, yeah, I can understand that. But on the second one, the second plane that hit, if you'll notice, and you've seen, you can see the explosions in Newsweek or Time Magazine Special Edition, you've seen from a bunch of different angles. Mm -hmm. Most of that fuel burned up outside the building. That's true. Because he hit, if you're looking at the building, he hit to the right he of hit, the center. He just hit one corner. That's right, and he was banking. Yeah. And most the momentum would, put, would push all that material forward. Most of it flew out uh, away from the building and uh, actually was dissipated by burning up in a great uh, great fireball. That's yeah. right. And as far as detonations bringing down, I don't know. what uh, When my wife got home to start recording for me, it was, uh, it was about 1 o'clock, 1.30, so I had all the sanitized. I had on tape all I got the sanitized versions. But there are, on Fox News, which she was recording from, it did say on one of the captions, it says, Fourth Explosion Rocks World Trade Center. Yeah. And there's another thing. Uh, I think it was about oh, a couple days after the attack, you had said something about some of the people that had been fingered as terrorists were screaming their heads off in uh, Morocco and in Europe that they're alive, they're alive, and what are you doing? Yeah. 
and uh, speak with my uncle in Greece this Sunday, and he said that's been big news in Greece. Yeah. So, so the United States government is lying to everybody. All of these guys were using fake ID. Yeah. Now, now, if you're an Islamic terrorist, and you don't want anybody to know who you are, and you're going to die in the crash, you're going to die in the crash. Right. Why would you have assumed the identity of an Islamic Muslim? Try to put blame somewhere else. Yeah, but if you want to put blame, you don't want to put it on your own people. That's right. That's right. Because nobody stepped up to take credit for this, which means they never intended to. So why didn't they assume the identities of Israelis? Mm. Or Americans? It smells sick. Or Germans? It stinks to high heaven. And if nobody knows who they are because they were using assumed identities of other people, how do they know who the terrorists were? I don't know. That's They're all dead. Burned it amazed up. me. It quote unquote amazed me how quick they were turning out information on yeah. these guys. And one other thing, not to get a little too, uh, I don't, don't want to say esoteric, but you know, these guys were the night before they died. At least one group was in a, a topless bar, strip right. club, right? Devout Muslims don't do that. Exactly. They, they never drink alcohol. alcohol that I know for the fact. They don't mess around with loose women. They don't have lap dances. And if if in their wildest dreams they ever were going to go to a bar, they would never have taken a copy of their holiest book, the Quran, and leave it on a bar stool. That's right. To be conveniently found. And they wouldn't have used credit cards with their names on them. And they wouldn't have allowed their driver's license with their actual picture to be Xeroxed. But they did. You see, this stinks. This, this, this is intelligence stuff to blame somebody else. Well, let me ask you this, and this is kind of, I don't know if it's off the bat or not, but, you know, I was thinking about, the, you know, these guys are about to die. They know they're going to die, but they're living it up the night before, okay? Obviously, they're not, uh, they're not the devout fundamentalists they're being portrayed to be. I got to thinking, I read a book way back. Uh, That's the point. Secret Society. If they were the really, the devout Muslim Islamic terrorists who were willing to die for the dictates of their religion against the great Satan America, they would never have done any of that. That's right. the whole point. It was not Islamic fundamentalist Muslims of any kind well, then, yeah, who I were in that, that bar drinking. I made that same connection, and then I got to thinking, well, who would knowingly kill themselves like that? And then I got to thinking about a book I'd read years back by Aaron Darul. It's about secret societies, mm -hmm. and he writes this interesting chapter on the assassins. Yeah. And... You know, they believe, the, well, the leadership of the assassins didn't believe in heaven or hell. It was just life on earth. No, but that's they, not true. They believed in a place called paradise. Right, but I thought that's what they used to fool the uh, the, uh, the converts. They put the person in a, in a room and make it look like paradise with women and honey flowing out of the walls and all that good stuff. I thought that the leadership though, didn't believe in that period. I thought that was... Oh, no, the leadership doesn't. It, it's, a, it's a con job to get these people to, to join the assassins and then be willing... Uh, to kill themselves any time they're ordered to on any mission that they're ordered to, to go on. The that's, assassins, that's what I, the assassins uh, uh, ceased to exist uh, hundreds of years ago. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. That's what these guys sounded like. But. Well, you, you know, you can accomplish this with any secret society. This, this is true. This is very true. Okay. Well, appreciate it. You're welcome. Good night. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Bill. Yeah. Uh, I've talked to General Ben Parton a couple of times since this tragedy, and he's claiming that, uh, in contradistinction to what he said about Oklahoma City, that these jets could have and did, in fact, take those buildings down all by themselves. He's welcome to his opinion. Okay. I can tell you that at least one of those buildings fell from the bottom. Okay, would, would you consider talking to him about that and uh, you guys getting together on the same page? No. Be helpful to the Patriot community in general? No. Okay, listen, listen to me very carefully. I don't give a damn about the Patriot community in general. I do my own research. I document what I find. It's based upon evidence. Okay? I don't care if anybody likes me or doesn't like me. Most of the so-called Patriot community are a bunch of liars and scam artists and socialists who just can't wait to get all they can out of the government while pretending to be against big government. So don't call me up and say it'd be good for the Patriot community in general. You don't even know what the hell you're talking You don't even know what the Patriot community in general it is. <laughs> and I would bet you you'd probably include Alex Jones in there. Good evening. You're on the air. 
one of the uh, one of the things that a lot of people are overlooking is the fact that Afghanistan is a threat to the international world order because these guys are nationalists, religious nationalists, and their beliefs, and they don't want to be tied into the international banking system and their control. And people like Milosevic and the Taliban are a direct threat to internationalism because their, their very presence can disrupt the concept of internationalism regionally and then across the whole globe. Absolutely correct. You say that about any fundamentalist religion or any people who are trying to hang on to their culture and their, and their beliefs and their, and their country. And the, the Afghans have every right, every right under, under whatever you want to think about it, they have the absolute right to their own determination. Absolutely. That's, now, if that's the, correct. Now, if the Afghan people don't like the Taliban, they're all armed. The whole country of Afghanistan is armed to the teeth. They can go and shoot those guys out of office. That's right. But you know what? They accept the Taliban... <laughs> And, and regardless of what the national press and the international press in this country and the world says, the majority of people over there are behind their government. And the reason why that government is there is because the majority of people support them. Well, I think you're probably right. And, and, and you know, they, they, uh, they, have, they have done everything to disrupt any... <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is what we've been disrupting. Yeah. That's why they, I said earlier. We've been disrupting really... the whole world and, and, and anybody's ability to create their own self-determination, to have their own their own sovereign nation. That's, they, they cannot allow that. That's because, as I've told you before and proved with documentation, official government documentation, during my series on, uh, on treason and the New World Order, mm -hmm. documented, read these documents over the year, it has been the policy of the United States government since World War II, since during World War II, as a matter of fact, to be the instrument through which world government is created, brought about, and made a reality. Yes. The whole thing is, is a creation of the United States. Right. The whole the, Euro the, Europe the, the, Europe Europe the European Union was an idea born in Washington, D.C. Yes. And I, I believe today the reason why we went to war against Germany in World War II was because the Germans' concept was nationalism. It was not internationalism, well, like I be, I be, international I, I, communism. I beg to differ with you. Hitler's goal was to eventually take over and rule the world. Well, If that's not globalism, I don't know what the hell is. Uh, that, that, can, that, that could be. Yeah, well, that's, but that I, my, my impression was that his... His, his people were pursuing a nationalist concept. Well, and they could not allow that to infect the rest of the world. Because there were people all over the world of other ethnic groups, other racial groups, who had, had considered the model of national socialism insofar as maintaining their own national sovereignty and destiny outside of the control of the international cartel. So what's your point? My, my point is, well, it, it goes back to the very first... You've got to hurry they, up because we're out of time. Yeah, I know. They, they, so they make, cannot make your... allow any nation or group of people to have their own uh, nation. No, well, that's correct. It's, it's all about world government, and right. everybody has to be controlled. They want to enslave the entire human race. Mm -hmm. I've said it a million times. That's exactly and, what And I think Ben Laden is part of that greater plot and, and he is there as an instrument read to bring this wrath have you ever read of internationalism on the Afghanis. Have you ever read the report from Iron Mountain? No, sir. Read it. Thanks for calling. That's it, folks. That's all she wrote. Good night. God bless each and every single one of you. Good night, Annie Poon Allison. I love you. Did you hear Larry King live tonight, folks, where uh, Alexander Haig and uh, Cap Weinberger 
We're talking about how these terrorists were so despicable because they attacked civilians. And they killed over 6,000 civilians. And uh, we've never done that in our history. And, and it's such a despicable thing. We always only attack military targets. That's a bold-faced lie. We bombed the city of Dresden in World War II with fire bombs and killed over 150,000 in one night. Women and children and old men, all civilians, all non-combatants. Alexander Haig, Casper Weinberger, you're liars. You lied tonight. We also bombed Hiroshima and killed over 150,000 or more civilians, non-combatants, including American prisoners of war who were in a camp there including two of the largest Christian centers in Japan. Did the same thing in Nagasaki. Alexander Haig and Cap Weinberger, you lied tonight on the Larry King broadcast. And I don't like liars. I don't like hypocrisy. Tell the truth or shut up. Don't miss tomorrow night's broadcast, The Hour of the Time. You're listening to William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. And now you know why.